Cody Ross comes in to score. Watch that scoreboard change and look at the reaction of Phillies fans when they see the score Ooh. from Shea Stadium. The Marlins got one more and it's now five to nothing, Florida. And the Phillies have taken the field, so they know now that the Marlins are leading the Mets. It's now seven to nothing. Two more runs scoring on a Tom Glavin throwing error. Glavin did not get out of the first inning. Well, the Phillies have taken the field unless Chuck Maniak is starting lineup for Washington. Felipe Lopez shortstop, Ronnie Belliard second base, Brian Zimmerman third base, Dimitri Young first base, Austin Kearns right field. Willie Mopena left field, Jesus Flores catching, Justin Maxwell center field, Jason Bergman pitching, facing 44 year young and Jamie Moyer, the hometown guy, is going to pitch this season finale. Well, I want to give you this stuff for Moyer, but the crowd's going nuts because Dan Uglet doubled in those two more to make it seven to nothing. Just listen. <laughs> Well, what the Phillies have to do is never mind what's going on at Shea, win this game. Absolutely. Win this game. That's what Jamie Moyer will try to do. Well, if this doesn't psych you up, I don't know what will because we're going nuts up here. <laughs> and the first pitch of the game is a swing and a miss. One strike. <laughs> I know you can't start the game with a changeup, but that almost looked like a changeup. It was. <laughs> like Shane Raleigh used to start with a fastball, and we thought it was a changeup. <laughs> a bunt try, and Jamie's going to have to hurry, and he does. Fine play by Jamie Moyer. That wasn't a bad bunt. And Jamie makes a very fine play for out number one. Well, he made sure that he gripped the ball before he actually threw it. Turned around, good mechanics. Look at that, and fires the ball. That's actually harder than he throws the pitches to home plate. Nice play. <laughs> One down, and that will bring on Ronnie Belliard. All right, now we'll do it. <laughs> Jamie starting his 33rd game. There are the numbers. Go get them. There's the scouting report. Hometown guy in a huge game. He attended the World Series parade in 1980. Right. Southerton High School and St. Joe's product delivers a strike to Ronnie Belliard. Well, the veteran hitters, their game plan would be to take, 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 but if he throws early strikes, he'll get them out of that game plan. Good to see the crowd in the game, however, early. Change up. That Belliard well out in front. No you know, balls and two strikes. You know, they were going to be in this game, but when that. You know, you got that uh, first quarter football score up there right now. That got him into it real fast. That's seven nothing. Nothing into it. A belly yard line drive, and that's a fair ball down the right field line, going all the way to the corner. Victorino chases it down. Belly yard rolls into second with a stand up double. Well, here's our key state Chrysler G keys to the game. I made it simple. Win this one for the Gipper. Speaking of football, the Gipper being Charlie Manuel. We stuck with these guys through thick and thin on highs and lows and never ever wavered. Win it for him today. Brian Zimmerman hitting at 268. 24 homers. He's knocked in 91. One ball and no strikes to Zimmerman. Belliard second base one down. This will change up to a nothing. Birthday wishes today to Brian Burnett, loyal Phillies fan from Philadelphia, wishes from his family and from us. And to Agnes Morrow celebrating her 81st from family and friends. Balls and a strike to Zimmerman. Zimmerman hitting 385 against left hand pitching. 
That's one for five lifetime against Jamie Moore. It was a double. Just missed the outside corner. Three balls and a strike. Dimitri Young waiting on deck. Line drive center field. Rowan there makes the catch. Get it on the nose, but that Aaron Rowan, that's two down, and that'll bring on Dimitri Young. Young's the eighth leading hitter in the league, hitting at 320, switch hitter batting 300 right handed. Well, you can see Jamie as he's actually getting ready to cover. He talks to everybody. I'm telling you, the kid has, well, older man, I should say, has fun every time he's out there. Better. That's a good attitude yeah. for it. I'm an older man. Okay. He's a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Belly out second base two down and here is Dimitri Young. Signed as a minor league free agent he's had quite a year. The veteran first baseman. Got himself a two year contract and didn't even have a job going into spring training. One ball and one strike. That's the pitch Jamie Moyer needs to get to be effective. Those balls that are borderline down. Jamie won to know this year against the Nationals. Lifetime he is seven and four. The good career ERA of three zero six. On the ground is shortstop J Roll. Throws him out. No runs a hit, no errors, one left after one half. Nationals nothing, Phil's coming to bat. Bergman six and five with a 4-3-3 ERA. Pretty good strikeout walk ratio. He's pitched well against the Phil's. He does not have any wins or losses, but he certainly kept the Nationals in the game. One strike. Southwest Airlines scouting report on him. Good moving four seam fast. Well, he has four pitches, so he sees what's working. He can have a good move to first base and control the running game, too. That was a good breaking ball. That's the thing we've seen from him this year is he always seems to have a pitch or two that is working well. And right handed hitters only hitting 199 against him. He is a Rutgers University product. Man lap in New Jersey. Just turned 26 five days ago. Two balls and two strides. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant tonight is Brenda Harris of Salem, New Jersey. The Phillies hit a home run in this game. Brenda wins $100. Right now, only a McDonald's any size premium roast coffee, just 69 cents. J. Rose set so many records this year, it's hard to keep track of him. He's only two for 14 against Bergman, one triple though, and one home run. He starts it out with a base hit. How about Jimmy Rollins? Does he set the table or what? Oh boy. Leads the league and runs scored. Another thing J. Roll has done is set an all time National League record for most extra base hits by a shortstop. Short, compact swing, just hitting the ball the other way. Has a lot of confidence in his ability to be able to play this game. Doesn't make a lot of mistakes mentally either. Here's Victorino, and he's going to try to bunt him along, and he takes a low. One ball and no strikes. Shane hitting at 283. Three for 15 off Bergman. And the key problems close. That's what we're talking about. He's a 1.17 guy to home plate and a good move to first base. So. The Nationals do a pretty good job really controlling the running game there. Their pitchers, you don't have a lot of real slow guys out there. The Dorito did not indicate bunt and takes the ball. Two balls and no strikes. Make no doubt about it. The floor is the catcher. He can throw. Throws the ball very active, quick with his feet. Not going to be able to 
outrun that baseball. You'll have to get the jump off of Berkman, the pitcher. There goes J. Roll. It's a called strike. The throw will not be in time. Stolen base number 40 for Jimmy Rollins. We gotta love. I mean, the Phillies are aware. We're talking about it downstairs this morning that Bergman and Flores, as Gary mentioned, can throw well, that they can control the running game, but that doesn't mean they have to shut you down. And he steals a bag right out of the chute. Great job. Straight still as well. Never looked around to see if Victorino was gonna swing at the ball. Two balls and a strike to Victorino. Gonna try to get him to third with a bump, but he takes it wide. Three balls and a strike. Strike. Victorino thought it was inside, perhaps low, but it's a full count out of Victorino. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Mets are on the board. It's 7 1 Florida. Luis Castillo scoring on a wild pitch. Pounce right back to Bergman, and J. Roll will not advance on it. So Victorino is retired, one down. Brown's still at second base, and the batter will be Chase Utley. Jay's fourth in the league in hitting, hitting at 332. 22 homers, he's knocked in 102, scored 104. Fifth in the league in on base percentage, sixth in the league in slugging percentage. Five time against Bergman, he's two for 12 with a double and a triple. It's a foul, one strike. Rollins, second base, one down. One on the count to Utley. Just two for 12 lifetime against Jason Bergman. Double and a triple. Collectively, have not hit this right hander well. Collectively, this line of hitting just 216 against Bergman. In his career, he's 0 1 lifetime against the Phils, but has a good career ERA of 3.29. We note about Maxwell the other night, the young kid playing center field. He plays everybody really, really deep. Church played more shallow yesterday. There he is, Maxwell, Justin Maxwell. So, you know, Jimmy Rollins is going to score on most hits anyway to the outfield. But you keep that in mind, you can first to third as deep as he is. One and two, the count to Chase Utley. Pickoff tried, second base, Jay Rolls back. There goes J. Roll. The pitch down. Oh, wow. No throw by Flores. It's a stolen base for Jimmy Rollins, who steals second and third. Now has 41 steals. Somebody and a came. fly ball or infield ground ball can bring him home now. Somebody came to play, that's for sure. Right yeah. out of the shoot. Look at this guy. Stole stole on a breaking ball. The best best pitch to steal on. Flores not even having a chance. 
Good eye, however, by Utley not swinging at that ball that was breaking down and in. Full count to Chase Utley. Ryan Howard lurking on deck. Keep the middle infielders back up and see the run on a ground ball here or the fly ball. Line drive to right field. It's caught by Kearns. Here comes J. Roll. Jimmy Rollins gets the Phillies on the board. He did that himself. Single, stole second, stole third, scores on a sack fly. J. Roll has set the table for the Phillies all year. What a job he has done. Well, MVP, uh, they say. Getting yes, ready sir. to say that. Exactly. MVP is right. He really got Victorino off the hook, not being able to get him over. Best hitter on the team, and Utley does it again. Shows you why one day he will lead this league and hitting. Throws up the line. Here's Ryan Howard hitting at 265, second of the league in homers, 46 of them, second of the league in RBIs with 133. On ball and no strikes, they have the shift on for Howard. One and one the count to Ryan. Breaking ball missing, two balls and a strike. Chase the low pitch, two balls and two strikes to Howard. We see already from Jason Bergman the, the repertoire that he has. Fastball that he sinks, he also throws a four seamer, he'll throw a curveball, slider, and a changeup. His fastball full count. <laughs> Howard goes down swinging, and that'll be all, but J. Roll gets the Phillies on the board. Bell's gonna run the one hit. Two steals by J. Roll after one. It is one nothing. Bills. Standing room only here at Citizens Bank Park as the Phils lead one nothing. We move to the second. Austin Kearns leads it off. He's hitting at 266. 16 homers. He's knocked in 73. One ball and no strikes to Kearns. Two for five lifetime against Jamie Moore, including a double and a triple. Two balls and no strikes. Got that one over at the knees, two and one to count to Kearns. That one over at the knees. Two balls and two strikes. Yeah, that's the pitch he needs. That one at the knees or just a little bit below. I'd want to get that ball up near the belt area. LER got a double with that ball up in the zone. Line drive well hit and snared by Victorino. Victorina was playing him over right center and makes a running catch for out number one. Well, he can run. Shane Victorino is just a tremendous defensive outfielder, gets great jumps on the ball, and that's just sheer ability to catch that baby. And he likes it, likes to run. Willie Mopaney hitting a 302. One strike to him. 
That's a pitch he didn't get the other night. And some days you get it, some days you don't. And Phil Cuzzy, a little bit of an expanded plate today, and so far so good for Jamie. Now the back. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Phillies Television Network. Now balls and two strikes to Willie Mopain, who's done well for the Nationals since coming over from Boston. Down and in, one ball and two strikes. It's only hitting 218 for the Red Sox with five over 17 RBIs, but hitting 302 for the Nationals, 412 in his last five games. Got him with the changeup. That's two down here in the second. That brings on Jesus Flores. Well, 2008 season tickets to Phillies baseball here at beautiful Citizens Bank Park on sale now. Guarantee a great seat location. Many plans to choose from. 17 games, 13 Sundays, or full season plan. For information on 2008 Phillies season tickets, go online to phillies.com. Here's Flores. He's hitting at 247. One strike to him. Space more twice. Jamie has struck him out twice. Change up away. One and one the count. A little bit wide, two balls and a strike. Three and one. Justin Maxwell wakes on deck. Side corner, full cow. My hitters are going to have to make the adjustment. Phil's calling those balls that are a little bit down, and that to me would be a ball. Hitter needs to make the adjustment. Drive deep left and it's hooking foul. Three and two at Jose Jesus Flores. Now yeah, that's his fastball that he actually got inside. Maybe a change up. But you don't want to be messing around too much inside unless you're off the plate. Change up, struck him out. No runs, hits, airs, and none left. And after one and a half here at Citizens Bank Park, it's the Phils one and the Washington Nationals nothing. And Aaron Rowan will lead it off for the Phillies. Aaron hitting at 311, 27 overs. He's knocked in 89. Tenth from the league and runs scored. He's crossed the dish 105 times. I'd like to send along our very best for a speedy recovery and get well wishes to Tony Foch, loyal Phillies fan, Tony umpire for 30 years, including calling Ruben Amaro's games when Total Package was playing at Penn Charter. Total Package. <laughs> Hope Tony Foch is feeling better real soon. I love that name for him. And he still answers to it, which oh, really? is sad. <laughs> Jason Bergman, ready to work to Rowan. 
Foul back over the screen, one strike. I think I want to do Rowan. Quick strikes to Aaron. Good breaking ball. Started right at him, floated right around the plate. Routed sharply, but Zimmerman gloves and throws him out. That's one down. Zimmerman, a good third baseman. And the batter will be Pat Burrow. Burrow hitting him 257. 30 overs, he has knocked in 97. Tied for second in the league in walks with 113 of them. Behind only Barry Bonds. One ball and one strike. the nose but a foul ball one ball and two strikes to Pat Burrow well, he's out in front on that one there he's going to try and keep those hard hit balls fair he's seeing the ball though getting it up there high in that zone mile high pop up who wants it looks like Felipe Lopez the shortstop will make the play and that's two down. Now bring on Greg Dobbs. Greg Dobbs playing third base today. Charlie Manuel just decided he was going to go for a little more offense uh, and in place of the potential defense by Abraham Nunez, who usually plays there and uh, hopes he gets something out of Dobbs early in the game to build up a lead. Dobbs hitting 273, 10 homers. He's knocked in 55. Smash, but right at Dimitri Young. He makes the play himself, and that'll be it. No runs, hits, errors, and none left after two. Phil's one, Nationals nothing. Rookie Justin Maxwell leads it off for Washington here in the third, hitting at 304. Moyer ready to work. One strike to Maxwell. Those are the one nothing lead here in the third inning. And Jay Stadium still seven to one Florida. One ball and one strike. Loops one foul broke his bat on the foul ball. The barrel going way out past the mound. So Maxwell get a different bat. One ball and two strikes. That right, ball ate him up. Has that open stance. You can get in there, but you leave that ball over the plate. You can see how big this guy is he's going to be a strong hitter just a young player right now on the Toyota Major League scoreboard San Diego trying to clinch the wild card has a one nothing lead on Milwaukee on a Brian Giles homer San Diego's he is pitching Brett Tomko in that game they were one pitch away one strike away from winning the wild card yesterday when Tony Gwynn Jr. dropped the Triple. And then they lost an extra inning. So what a great game. One strike one after strike. a whole season. Well, it's a pretty good pitch, too. It's down Trevor, with Trevor hooked. Hoffman out there yep. pitching. Yep. Two balls and two strikes. 
called third strike. Maxwell's out of there. That's three straight strikeouts for Jamie Moyer. One down here in the third. Well, this is really borderline. Good pitch there for Jamie. By the knees. Kuzi's been actually calling that pitch. So, again, it's up to the hitters to make the adjustment. Jason Bergman, the pitcher, 5 for 36. 139 hitter. One ball and no strikes. On the inside corner, one on one to come. Change up. One ball, two strikes. Chops it softly. Dobbs is going to have to hurry. He does. He gets Bergman. That's two down. And he'll bring out the top of the order, Felipe Lopez. And Citizens Bank Park, not just for baseball. On non game days, consider hosting your next event at one of the many exclusive spaces, including the Diamond Club or Hall of Fame Club. Whether it's a party, meeting, trade show, or even a wedding, make it memorable at beautiful Citizens Bank Park. For information, call Philly's Special Events, 215 218 5100. There's Lopez. Tried to butt his way on his first time up. Jamie Moyer threw him out. That door breaking ball for a strike. One strike to Lopez. Missed with that one. One ball and one strike. Side two and one the count on the Toyota Major League scoreboard. They're in the third inning now. At Jay Stadium, Florida leading the Mets seven one. Tom Glavin did not survive the first inning. That's hit deep to center field, but Rowan makes the catch in deep left center field, and that is it for the Nationals here in the third. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. We go to the bottom of the third. One nothing fills. Standing room only here at Citizens Bank Park. The fans are really into it as Ruiz takes one on the outside corner for a strike. Carlos hitting at 257. Six homers, he's knocked in 54. Lines it fair to right field, heading toward the corner. Ruiz is going to get a double on it. He goes in standing with a two base hit. Jamie Moyer will be the batter and he'll try to move him along. Not over swinging, going the opposite way. Once that ball gets right down the line, now it's going to hit the rail in automatic double. Ruiz had a rare poor game yesterday yeah. when he made a mad decision and then threw the ball away at second base. But for the most part, that rookie has really had a fine year behind the plate. Couldn't agree with you more. Moyer will try to bunt him along. Jamie with eight sacrifices takes it high and away. One ball and no strides. I want Zimmerman, the third baseman, to come in and feel that ball. Makes it almost automatic as long as that ball is not in the air. It's got to get it on the ground. Two balls and no strikes. Side corner, two and one the count to Jamie Moore.
Carlos Ruiz second base. Nobody out. Jab had him missed on the bunt drive. Two balls and two strikes. Now really important to try and move these runners along along rather. Makes it easier for that next batter. A lot easier to get them in on third base, but less than that, two outs. Missed on the bunt try, a foul tip. So that's one down and coming to the plate, Jimmy Rollins. J. Roll produced a first inning run. And Look what he did. Well, line drive that he came up with, stole second. Victorino not able to get him over. He steals third right away. Now he comes in on a sacrifice fly by Utley. Been the guy for the Phillies just about all year long. Takes it high, one ball and no strikes. Two balls and no strikes. Wills mentioned earlier about the outfield and deep. I mean, Maxwell is just too far out there. There's no chance for him to throw out a runner at second base, a ground ball that would be hit up the middle. Yeah, just even a guy, even a guy that doesn't run that well. And Carlos runs pretty well. Three balls and no strikes. I wonder about that. You know, he's just a young player, doesn't have a whole lot of experience. Maybe he, that's a comfort level for him. But if he's going to play there a lot, they're going to have to get him in a little bit more over yeah, the years. It's usually a guy that can't go back on the ball. They'll have him play back deeper. He might be better in coming in. Off the bottom four pitches. So the fills with two men on base, one out for Shane Victorino. It's a foul back behind the play. One strike. You know those hockey goalie masks. Flores wears one. So does Brian Schneider. They make a distinctive sound <laughs> when that foul tip whacks them. Like plastic. <laughs> yeah. That is loud. Still hurts though. Any way you look at it, when it hits that mass, it just jars your whole head. A foul out of play. No balls and two strikes. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Padres have scored two more first inning runs. On Jeff Blum, two run doubles. So San Diego now leads Milwaukee 3 0. They were in the bottom half of the first inning as the Padres try to clinch the wild card. That one's low. One ball and two strikes. Arizona has clinched National League West. Cubs have clinched National League Central. Four teams are still involved in the playoff hunt on this last day of the regular season. The Phils, the Mets, Colorado, and San Diego. All right, that's just unbelievable. That many teams that still undecided. That's the way it boiled down to the last game of the season. It's another indication why the wild card has been a big plus for baseball. It really has. No doubt about it. I know some people fought it, and it's understandable when you're traditionalists and all, but it really helps keep interest in a yeah. lot of cities. And look what it's done here in the last day. Well, it's a end up filling ballparks normally wouldn't be filled at this time of the year. Two balls and two strikes to Victorino. Balls back another one. Having him throw pitches. I keep swinging at that high fastball, however, that is out of the zone. Who's he's been calling the low pitch? Just get it down just a little. See what that is above his hand, so that could be a ball. Next pitch for Bergman will be his 50th. We're just in the third inning. 
Can't stay off it. No. Excited. You know, th th this is an unbelievable atmosphere here today. You see Bergman's breakdown. And, you know, you played a long time, and it, it's sometimes, guys, it's hard to play with emotion and yet keep it. Yeah, you got to control. control it. You have to control it, exactly. Hit him. Yep. Yep. He is hit by a pitch ball, and that will load the bases for Chase Utley. So they're loaded with one out. Well, a slider didn't move on it, actually just took it. That's what you call taking it for your club. You can see how he at the last minute tried to get out of the way of it. After all those high fastballs, he kept fouling them off, but they went in another direction. He wound up hitting them. Utley stands in with the bases loaded. One out here in the third. Phil's lead one nothing. One ball and no strides. Bergman throwing that ball up in the zone looking for a pop up. He's trying to get it down in his zone. More or less trying to hit that line drive. Hopefully catch a gap. Okay, they're going to get the bullpen up as St. Clair gets on the phone. Nationals credit where well, they played hard this weekend. You know, they're very professional. They're trying to do everything they can to win these games. Two balls and no strikes. Get up that Jonathan Albaladeo. breaking ball looked like Chase was swinging fastball all the way and a real good slider. Now that's that pitch will get any hitter looking fastball. I watched this pitch break right down by the foot there. So that ball stayed up a little bit or was a slider took a little bit off of it. High pop up in the infield. Infield fly rule in effect. Lopez makes the catch, so that is a big out number two for Bergman. It's up to Ryan Howard. Now that's that pitch that he wants. Get that ball up to be able to get a pop up. Threw one down and all the rest up. Watch this pitch. Fastball. It didn't overswing on it. It just popped it up. Howard struck out his first time up. Ryan has just won parade lifetime against Bergman. It was a home run. Wide run ball on those strikes. Boy, they're pitching him away. Left field is just wide open. What he's done combined the last two years 104 homers. Way outside. You know, even if he walks in here, you know, that'd be something to just take. Get something out of this with two outs. Don't chase pitches out of the strike zone the way he did the first time. Well, Bergman has walked out six times. He goes and no strikes. That's the fastball, two and one. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Now he's in his pool mode. That's what I was talking about. Just taking what the pitcher gives you, be able to hit that ball, not necessarily out of the ballpark, but try and line it in the left. Two balls and two strikes.
Release at third, he doubled. Rollins at second, he walked the three. At first, he was hit by a pitch. Two outs here in the third inning. Two and two to Howard. Oh, just got a piece of it. Stays alive. Flores couldn't hang on. Well, that was his best pitch to hit. As he was just behind it, look exactly where it is. That's right in his wheelhouse, almost right down the middle. There's Abaladejo, the right-hander, and the look from Ashburn Alley, what they see. Two balls and two strikes. Grounded sharply foul. Still two and two. Well, foul ball, started foul, continued foul. Top spin. Young wanted no part of it, first baseman. Especially when he's pretty sure it was foul. <laughs> The time to Olay them. I'm not getting hit with that one. Line drive hit the right field. Ruiz scores. J roll safe at home plate. A bases loaded single. Ryan Howard and the Phillies lead it three to nothing here in the third inning. Howard now with 135 RBIs. Boy, Belliard was so deep, too, as we've been showing all weekend with him. And he still got that screamer over his head. It looked like Belliard was going to catch it at first. That ball kept climbing and just got over his head for sure. So the Phils have taken the three nothing lead here a big two out hit for Ryan Howard great base running Jimmy Rollins of course off on the crack of the bat Austin Kearns can throw he threw it made a strong throw here too but Jimmy sliding behind the catcher Flores big two out here. Wow. here's Aaron Rowan to try to keep it going one ball and no strikes Rowan grounded sharply the third his first time up. Popped him up in the right center field. Austin Kearns makes the play, and that'll be all for the Phils. But the Phils get a big bases loaded hit from Ryan Howard, scoring two. Two hits, two left. Chris Wheeler with play by play in the fourth after three, three nothing Phils. Our Independence Blue Cross Philly of the Week honors go to you, the fan. For the fourth straight season, Phillies fans have flocked to Citizens Bank Park to cheer on their fightings. You were there in the cold and in the rain. You celebrated the good times and hung in there for the not so good times. You were there for the 20 plus sellouts this season, totaling over 3 million fans. You have continued to create a true home field advantage. And this special thanks to you, the fans, is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. And the fans are here in mass today and just roaring. So many things that have gone on already in this afternoon. And Ronnie Belliard, the batter, he doubled his first time up. The only hit off Moyer thus far. And thinks about Bunning, takes it for a strike. A ball and a strike to Belliard, batting second. Then Ryan Zimmerman and Dimitri Young here in the fourth. Now Dobbs actually giving him that particular hit all the way back. He gets it down. Be pretty difficult to throw him out. Honey Belliard really hot for the Washington Nationals here in the month of September. He's done a great job for them offensively and defensively. Two and two. Well, he lost his job over there with the Nationals. They believe Felipe Lopez to second base, who is the shortstop now. Guzman got hurt. Moved Felipe back, and Belliard signed a two year deal. Moved right into second base is, is his position. Of course, he played with the Cardinals last year. Yeah. He's been with Milwaukee and a good player. Mm -hmm. 
And Jamie Moyer wanted to make a good 2 2 pitcher. A long look in it. Ruiz, and here we go. And it's 3 and 2. Just the one base runner so far for the Nats, and that's Belliard's double. Zimmerman waits. Towards the hole, cut off nicely by Dobbs. Low, wide throw, safe. He didn't touch the bag, did no. he? Tag him. Well, well, maybe he did. So that'll be an error on Dobbs. Well, he caught the ball in good fashion. Just got to be able to take your time, set your feet. He threw the ball wide. I couldn't tell on that angle whether or not he got him, but that's more really a routine play once you catch the ball and set your feet. You can see they would have had him by plenty. Missed oh, he him and it. he tagged the bat. Yep, he got the bat. Belly already see Jamie Moyer pointing too that he didn't do it, but on that replay, he definitely touched the bag. So an error to lead off the inning and now Zimmerman the batter line to center his first time up and the first pitch is low ball one hey, you got to make those plays for Jamie he's not going to be a forward for you to be making the errors you know with him and getting out of trouble he makes a good pitch you got to make the play it's just plain and simple and that was a good three two pitch to a tough hitter Two and zero, oh. and mistakes hurt the Phillies yesterday. Of course, in that game, a lot of times you try and be too perfect with your throw instead of just letting it happen like you do in practice and get it over there near the vicinity. Strike two and one. Chase Utley comes in as the second base umpire Gary Darling feel move a little bit for him. And there's Zimmerman's numbers, and Darling did move a step or two to his right. Didn't like that. Two and two. Well, he's been consistent with it. That's all I can say about Bill's calls, Bill Cousy's calls. He's been consistently calling the, the low pitch. Oh, as a hitter, you can move up toward the plate, toward the pitcher, in order to make the ball higher. If you know the umpire's calling balls, you think might be a little low. Strike three call on the inside corner. Zimmerman barks. So does the dugout. That, One ball, out. that ball there, I'm sorry, is right down the middle. Or right on the inside part of the plate. He just throws him, looking for the ball away. Jamie actually surprising him inside. That's a strike. Sorry. That's a strike. That's yeah. Right. Absolutely is. Well, Zimmerman was upset with, with some of those low pitches that Phil Cuzzy was calling on him. And you know, he took a pitch there that is definitely a strike. Here's Dimitri Young. He grounded the short his first time up. Hey, Cousy says, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Ball's right there. Dimitri fouls it off. Young playing his second game after missing 12 with a neck injury. Hit by a hard ground ball. I didn't think he'd play the rest of the year, but back now for, unfortunately, for these two games. Yeah. Phillies were happy to see him take the rest of the year off. There's a little tapper. Dobbs again. Got him, and that's a second out. And Belliard moves to second for Austin Kearns. Kearns hit a screamer his first time up to the right of Shane Victorino made a terrific play Dobbs getting the second out there in the inning uh, Victorino plays Kearns back a little bit deeper than he does most of the hitters respecting his power in the alleys
strike. The on deck batter Willie Mo Payne, another right handed hitter with power. Kearns with runners in scoring position, two outs, a 280 batter. One to one. Wicked foul. Look out down the third baseline. Jamie's ahead of him with ball and two strikes, two outs. Crowd's been doing a lot of waving of those towels with two outs in these games. Dontrell Willis was all over the place. Really was. Finally got knocked out of that game. The Mets had the bases loaded again, and whoever they brought in got out of it. So they go to the fourth, and it's still seven to one. And very fortunate that the Mets didn't score a lot more runs because Willis was wild. Fouled back. He hit Delgado with a pitch in that first inning, and not Delgado had to leave the game. No injury report on him as of yet. Dontrell himself was hit by a pitch in the Mets big or in the Marlins big first inning to force in a run. One ball and two strikes now on Kearns. Jamie Moyer battling right here to try and get out of this inning. Now shutdown inning is what he needs. Base hit. Belliard being waved around. Burl's throw to the plate is strong. Safe. No, an unearned run on the board into second goes Austin Kearns. It's three to one. Give credit to Kearns getting that base hit. Belly are coming around. Pat had it in, in good fashion. Short bounce, and he was safe. He had ball going down again. He throws the ball. One hop. Just beat it. Yeah, it was a little bit to the right. Home plate. It's on the plate or maybe a little bit to the left. He had a shot at him, but good hustle by Belliard with two outs. And they cash in on the error. And Kearns gets himself into scoring position with good base running, moving to second. And now Willie Mopena, the batter, struck out his first time up. 3-1 game. down the third baseline one ball and one strike Another ball hook foul. That's one and two. He got Willie Moe to chase a paint, uh, chase a uh, change up his first time up. Yeah, change up away. Good pitch. Well, he's in on him quite a bit in this at bat. It might be a good time to he'll think about trying that on him. He did. And it's way outside. Two and two. A lot of pitches for Moyer. He's up to 64 and not out of the fourth inning. And you see the breakdown. And that's outside. Three balls and two strikes with the catcher Flores on deck. Got a lot of umpires in the stadium today. See exactly where this pitch is and off the plate goes to tap. Got it. Stuck him out. An unearned run in the inning on one hit, an error, and one left. Three and a half. It's four. Three one fills.
Big right hander, formerly in the Pittsburgh Pirates organization, Jonathan Albaladejo is going to come on and pitch as you look at the fans here today. Victorino's guys and girls out there, the flying Hawaiians. Albaladejo coming into game number 14. He spent the year at their Triple A club, Columbus. See the opposition only hitting 159 against this big guy, and right handers 125. So he's helped them out. He pitched here on Friday night, one inning, one strikeout. So Bergman goes the first three. In charge with three earned runs. And they'll turn it over to Albaladejo. For an inning, he's due to bat third in the fifth inning. So looks like Manny Act is going to use a bunch of guys here today. Pat Burrell popped a short his first time up after lining a ball foul out of the ballpark. Misses with a breaking ball. Well, he's got three hits and three runs off Jason Bergman today. A walk, two strikeouts, and a hit batter. Strike one and one. Gets his fastball up in the area of 89 to 93. Fly ball to center field. It's hit well, but playable. Maxwell is very deep out there and now comes in one out. Well, fans, you can still register to be eligible to purchase potential World Series tickets at Citizens Bank Park. The opportunity to register for division and LCS games has closed. However, registration is open for World Series tickets. Winners will be notified by email. See phillies.com slash PS tickets for the details. Pretty good sign out there, about 14 years. It's been a long time since they were able to be in some postseason play and battling like heck here today. You see the flag out there from 93. That's 50. Worse on the left. 80 and 93. 80, 83. Don't want to skip your year. Yep. Dobbs pops it up. Playable third base side. Zimmerman. Two outs. There's a look at some of the stuff from 93. What a team that was. Fans love. This team reminds me a lot of that team that the fans really love them. They really enjoy this bunch and they certainly enjoy that 93 team with that cast of characters. Yeah. Bill Thompson platooning with Pete and Cavillian left field on that team. At Jim Eisenreich and West Chamberlain in right field. Jim Fergosi had some three really good platoons on that team. Two in the outfield and then of course more in Danny and Duncan at second base. You know, people talk about platooning like it's a bad word, where sometimes it could be a terrific thing for a club. The shortstop that year was Juan Bell when the season started, and then Kevin Stocker came up and saved him. Kim Batiste was on that ball club. Ruiz with a double and a run scored. One and two on Carlos. Jamie Moyer on deck. I'm trying to turn the lineup over here. See if Carlos can get on base. Albaladejo in his first inning at work. Think it maybe his only. We'll see. Look out. Oh, man. I don't even want to look. Hopefully everybody's okay. Oh, just a late swing, kind oh. of protecting the plate. That was a screamer. Really got to be aware. 
balls coming into the stands. Yeah. Even the players are looking around right now. They're very concerned. One and two. Oh, we Ooh. hit him. Abaladeo hits Ruiz. Certainly didn't mean to do that. Now, so Carlos, he'll turn the lineup over the hard way. Here's Carlos got hit on the hand on Friday. I was talking to him this morning, and he says his hand's fine. And here's today. Ooh. Hit him right in the stomach. That was a solar plexus shot. Although he's flexing his, like it hit him on the forearm as he may be trying to protect himself. Yeah. Scott Sheridan's out there. Carlos really getting beaten up in this series. The player's reaction would be like, would you just say they go, ow, oh, you know, <laughs> their heads would go back. Oh. <laughs> that is not a funny thing when that hits you. Jamie Moyer, the batter, pitches high for ball one. Jamie struck out trying to bunt his first time up. Jamie checks, peel to third, no swings, says Bruce Dreckman. And he's had the count, two and one. Jimmy Rollins on deck. That was a Getting all choked up here. Check swing. Yep. I was wondering what happened to your voice then. You'll be all right. A lot of emotion here today. And two balls and two strikes now, Jamie Moyer. Oh, man, look out. Another foul. That will not hit anywhere near as hard as the other one, but still into the stands. People ducking to get out of the way. It looks like everybody's okay. That one had a little more of a parachute on it. Round it towards short. Lopez will go to second. That'll end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Phils leave one. We're through four. Three one Phils. A couple of changes for the Phillies. One they didn't want to make necessarily, and that's Chris Coase coming into the game because that means Ruiz took a pretty good shot on that hit batter. And for defense, the purposes, Abraham Nunez will now come in to play third base. Coase will bat seventh, and Nunez will bat eighth in the order. A lot of times you think it is no big deal, but it really, really is because your catcher and your pitcher are in sync. Right on the same page as far as pitches, and it's pretty delicate. Now, this is Ruiz that he got hit, and I thought it was in the stomach, but it actually hit him on that elbow. Yeah. See right there, really a good look at it. It went right off his elbow, and that's why they had to take him out of the ball game. And a good point because Jamie Moyer really relies on being in sync with his catcher. And Ruiz has been his catcher for the most part. So now he and Chris Coase will work together and make it work. Outside ball one. Bottom of the order, Flores, Justin Maxwell, and then the pitcher do up. Albala Dejo. And a swing and a miss and a change up. And they have Saul Rivera up in the bullpen, it would appear. And that guy just pitches in every game. Uh, I, I'll say that. he's amazing. Him and also Ralph. Ralph pitches in just about 80 every game. High in the air to left field, playable for Pat Burrow. And there's the first out of the fifth inning.
And Justin Maxwell will bat struck out his first time up. And Nook Logan moves into the on deck circle to bat for Albaladejo. Good to get him out of there. He's a little bit too wild throwing balls and hitting people in the stomach, elbows. Yeah, and you figured he was only going to pitch the one inning anyway when they did they went straight up, didn't double switch, and his spot was third. Young Justin Maxwell, good looking prospect for them. Jamie keeps changing speeds, throwing that change up to him. Right. Likes those guys that really swing hard, trying to swing for the downs. It's Florida Marlins just added on another score. Eight to one now. You see Saul Rivera warming up and the crowd reacting to the snowman going up on the scoreboard. We like that snowman not on your golf cart. <laughs> Over for a strike. One and two. I'm sure you don't have those on your card. I do. You do. Sometimes. Okay. All part of the game, huh? It's like it's like taking offers. <laughs> Tap foul at the plate. inside two balls and two strikes one out in the inning nobody on base fills with a two run lead we're in the fifth in a tense taut really neat game here today just hit it off the end of the bat stayed alive two and two Moyer up to 75 pitches. We're only in the fifth inning. You see, they had a little bit of trouble getting yeah. together and what they want to do, and that's the point because Jamie and the catcher, he, he has a very interesting way of calling the game, a very different way, and how Coast and he have to start to work together. Three and two. There's Logan, the pinch hitter, waiting. Hard one hopper. Jimmy Rollins, this guy can fly. Woo, got him. Oh, what a play by Rollins. Well, and Maxwell you. can bust. You are talking about a shotgun of an arm and shortstop and put this on a line. You can hang up clothes from this day forward on him. Even though they have the dryer these days, let's take a look here at this line that he throws. Sets himself. Bam! Right there. Just gets it. And he knew that that was what he had to do. You see him get set, and he knew he had to throw some cheese over there. We can put something on that. Because Max, that's a point about knowing your runner. He knew Maxwell could fly. Boy, that guy could really run. Oh, uh, he's that right handed batter's box. <laughs> Logan bunts a lot. And so Nunez, a new third baseman, moves up. Logan, the former switch hitter, now just a right-handed batter. There's Abraham move, moving up just in case Logan bunts. Base hit. So Nook Logan with a pinch hit two-out single here in the fifth inning. Now the top of the order in Felipe Lopez is 0 for 2. He's out trying to bunt, and he's fly to center. Well, the last chance are you. Yes, you. The Sexiest Fan Alive will enter People Magazine's Sexiest Fan Alive contest. And you, guy or girl, can be in People Magazine's Sexiest Fan Alive issue, win a VIP trip for two to a 2008 Major League Baseball World Series game. To enter, go to PeopleSexiestFan.com. All down low to switch hitter Felipe Lopez. 0 for 2. Ronnie Belliard, a right handed batter on deck. Of course, the whole lineup is right handed today. Yep. 
2 and 0. Jamie pitching a little bit more careful right now. Don't want to start getting into the belly yard. Zimmerman. Glad to see Young. And Kearns hitting further down in the lineup. Yeah, which would lead you to believe he's going to get after Lopez here. Throws a strike as Felipe was taking all the way, two and one. Right back to Jamie Moore on a change up. He throws him out, and that's the end of the fifth. A runs a hit and one left. Phillies. Top of the order, Jimmy Rollins, Shane Victorino, Chase Utley, they lead by two. We just showed you eight to one. Florida had a couple men on base and a pitching change. I don't know who the Mets brought in, but whoever was got out of it. And now it is eight to one going through the bottom of the fifth. We're actually on the same pace right now with that game. The Mets started about 20 minutes earlier. There's Jimmy Rollins for most valuable player. Hard to argue with that. And he has been right in the middle of everything today. He's walked. He's single, scored two runs, stole a couple of bags. And now he faces Saul Rivera, the right hander, sinker ball specialist. And takes a sinker for a strike. Rivera keeps the ball in the ballpark with anybody in the game right now. See Jimmy's numbers off him. Tough right hander. Right back to him on that sinker. And Rivera throws him out, one away. And Shane Victorino will bat. Shane has grounded out and been hit by a pitch. Yeah, that was big that inning because it enabled Ryan Howard to come up and get that two out base hit to drive into that. Right, it loaded the bases with one out, and then Chase Utley popped a short for the second out, and Ryan Howard on a two strike pitch. Lined it over Belliard's head, and who was in deep right field for the two run single. And that's the difference in the game. 1 0 -oh and 1, a strike call. Sinker slider guy. Another ground ball. Oh, who would want to have this guy on their staff? Two outs. And Chase will bat. He has a sack fly and a run batted in the first inning, and then that pop up last time up. Look at this. That is really impressive. It really is, and giving it up to Aaron Rowan. In April. There's Aaron. That was a game tying home run in, in April that the Phillies eventually went on to win that game in this ballpark. Base hit in the hole to left. Well, Chase Utley's one for two, and that'll bring up Ryan Howard. He struck out and knocked in runs 134 and 135. Now, that's what you like to see. No matter whether or not it's two outs or not, as long as you have men on base, Ryan Howard coming up, the potential to be able to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Ryan Zimmerman, tell his heads in the game, he just came in to, to Rivera to remind him, and he's the guy that's going to be on second base for a force. Strike. Ryan Howard is last time up with the bases loaded hit, and this is where Ronnie Belliard, the second baseman, is playing him, and he hit a screaming line drive over his head to score two. Okay, you get hit with those. Oh, here's that two run single, line drive, good pitch on the outside, getting it over Belliard. Second baseman's head. I mean, that's not that's not easy to do to get over his head and in front of Kearns. Right, because he's playing in almost in right short right. And when he hit it, it looked like it was going to be the, one of those. Oh no, he's out there. He's going to catch it. I tell you, you get hit on the elbow. You really remember those those pitchers that do that. Bruce Keeson hit me in the elbow, and every time I see him, my elbow hurts. It's way too much for me. 
Bruce Keeson is a scout for somebody. We see him every once in a while, the old pirate. Grounded towards the hole. Belliard knocks it down. It got under the glove of the shortstop, Lopez. That's one of the weirdest. You got to call that an infield hit. Yeah, exactly. I tell you, he just smokes the ball. When he hits the ball, <laughs> it's just cartoon like because it, it gets by the fielder so quick. Oh, look at them smiles there going on with Ryan Howard. That's a legger. That's an infield hit. Underneath the glove here, <laughs> Felipe Lopez. It almost gets by Belliard, who's covered on the other side. That was that was something to see. Almost unfair to play a man like that. And Rivera does throw his ground balls. There's no doubt about it. And that's what he's done in this inning. Chase Utley hit a line drive on one hop through the infield. So now Aaron will bat the guy who hit that homer off him. Aaron is grounded to third and flied out. Oh, that sure would look good now. You know, even a base hit would good look good oh, right it sure now. Would. That'd be Try and get the run back he gave away in the fourth. Rivera comes in low with a slider. Well, you're starting to have those shadows in the next inning or so that will be creeping up. Most difficult to see the ball when you have those shadows. Yeah, you'd rather have the lead, that's for sure. Carlos Ruiz out with that elbow contusion. Chris Coast in the lineup now, batting behind Pat Burrell, who's on deck. Fly ball to left field, and it's playable. Pena, and that'll end the fifth inning. No runs, two hits, and two left. And to the sixth, 3 1 fills. A couple outs in the inning, and it just went to the sixth inning as Tom Gordon gets up. They really want to get Moyer through this inning, but they're not going to take any chances. They're going to have the bullpen ready. So that game to the sixth inning now at Shea, and we go to the sixth inning here. Belliard takes a strike on the outside corner. Ronnie Belliard has doubled and then lived on an error by the then third baseman Greg Dobbs in the fourth inning, scored their run. Uh, he's had just good at bats, though, the whole day. We've seen him, what, four down there, three or seven games. Yeah. He has consistent good at bats. Yeah, if that's what you want to do as a hitting coach, to get your guys to have good, solid at bats. And the way they are, since they're such good athletes, if they have good at bats, then they're going to have pretty good success. Just the opposite, though. They'll hit every now and then if they don't. The coach there telling Jamie, hey, keep the ball down. He motions with his glove. Well, there's a little difference right there with Ruiz. He just subtly put his glove down maybe a little bit lower and not really shake it down. Belliard with another hit. Shane Victorino keeps it in front of him. Guy's on three times again. Lead off single. And Charlie Manuel is starting to pace down there with all these right handed power hitters coming up representing the tying run. Belliard just fights another pitch off and gets a base hit. Now, he goes the other way. It's two strikes. The ball's going to be away. He goes the other way. More out over the plate. Victorino coming in and almost able. To get it and make sure he make sure he blocks it of course you don't want that ball to get by him keep the double playing or now they're going to stall a little yep, bit that's what they're doing he might even be thinking about making a move right well, now Well, you know either one of these guys Zimmerman's lined out and then struck out in the fourth he didn't like the call but it appeared to be a strike after one that was borderline before it. yeah it might be a little bit more aggressive this event And Moyer trying to get him to bite on something away. Misses 1 0. Quiet here in the ballpark right now. A lot of nervous tension here for understandable reasons. That's who Jamie pitching very carefully to him. See the, <laughs> there's a perfect example of that nervous tension. Well, it does make you nervous. I mean, being a fan or being a part of the Phillies, period. I mean, you see what's going on and knowing what you have to do. Oh, uh, he didn't give him that. First time that he didn't give him that pitch there that was 
borderline type low on the outside corner. Right, Very first the time. One Zimmerman complained about last time. So the count's 3-0 to Ryan Zimmerman. Let's still be careful here. On the inside corner, three and one. Dimitri Young on deck. Swing and a miss. Ryan Zimmerman has grounded into. 26 double plays this year. 27 look pretty good. Well, you see those shadows starting to creep up. This ball again, middle end to a right-handed hitter. That's usually where he likes the ball. Got see it. you later. Zimmerman tosses the bat. He thought it was ball four, and Ian Cousy have had problems all day. One out. That is a huge. That's a huge out because you don't want to have two men on, and the decision for Charlie Manuel. Sure, then you actually have to pick. Well, there's his hand. That's a change up on the inside part of the plate. Buzz inside a little bit. To be quite honest. Zimmerman. Uh, I don't know if he's ever been thrown out of a game. He just, you know, because he didn't even hardly bark at him, even though you know he was upset. Here's Young. What do you think? Stronger yeah. right handed or left handed, Dimitri Young? Well, he's natural right handed. I think he would be stronger right handed for me as a switch hitter. He's a natural right handed hitter. And he's staying with the left hander against him. The one thing is, though, uh, hitting on the left side, he faces more. Right handed pitchers than he would left handed. Well, that's what I was thinking about whether you would turn him, you know, bring Gordon in to turn him around at this point. There he is, lifetime. Now, obviously, he's going to hit more off right handers because you face more of them. So they make the decision they want to go the left hander to his right side. And he chases a change up, one and, and two. And he has one thing in his mind, and that's trying to hit the ball out of the ball. Say that right now. You can tell by his swing, almost leaving his feet. To try and hit the ball. To base it. Well, he just hooked the change up, and that might. Well, we'll see. Austin Kearns coming up. Got two big righties coming up. Yep. Got Kearns coming up yep, along with uh, Pena. So he'll go five and a third. And Charlie's going to make a move right now for Tom Gordon. So they gave him the option there. They wanted to, they wanted him to pitch to Dimitri Young and not turn him around with a right hand or left hand. So Jamie will depart. Three one game Moyer out Gordon in and Austin Kearns the batter Tom Gordon into game number forty four there are the numbers on him and real early to use Tom Gordon but do a lot of things differently yeah. come to these points in the well, season. Well you do you're looking for outs period you bring your guys in and what matters about the inning other than that closer now for me. Kearns takes it high ball one. Austin has lined out and singled in their run. One for five lifetime off Gordon. Willie Mo Pena on deck. Throw a fastball by him, one and one.
ninety three on that one from Gordon. Ronnie Belliard at second base Dimitri Young at first with one away. Two and one. See the shadow starting to creep out now towards the mound. Kearns towards second. Utley tags, throws, double play. Yes. Tom Gordon gets a job done. Nice job, Chase Utley. And the sixth inning is history. No runs, one hit, and one left. Phil's bat, bottom of the inning. 3 1. And JC Romero starting to throw in the Phil's bullpen. Pat has popped up and flied out. Jamie Moyer giving them a really good effort here this afternoon when they needed it. One unearned run in five and one third innings. Jamie did not walk a batter and he struck out six. Terrific job by Moyer and Tom Gordon to get out of that inning. 97 pitches for Jamie Moyer. Burl popped foul down the right field line. Dimitri Young fighting the sun and it's out of play. <laughs> He's funny to watch. Oh, it wasn't going to get there. Starts running over for that. Yeah. <laughs> you can see him going over, fighting the sun, looking down. That's what you're supposed to do. Ball well in the stands. Dimitri Young is one of the best liked guys in the game by everybody. He's just a good person. A lot of people are happy he's back and able to play. Inside. A lot of personal problems and has a good year for Washington. Yeah, Dan, this guy didn't even have a job. He's just really going to spring training almost as if he was going to be a coach. He needed a job there. Just mentioned about his problems. And lo and behold, he ends up having a year where he signs a two year deal. Never give him up. Swing and a miss as Saul Rivera goes to two and two now on Burrow. Rivera in his second inning of work. They started with Jason Bergman today, three innings. Then Jonathan Abaladejo for one, and now Rivera. 2 2 pitch. Pop up foul out of play. Ryan Howard tied now with Holiday. Matt Holiday. The runs batted in with 135 after his two today. Holiday and Arizona, Colorado, Arizona, they're in the second inning in their game. Big game for the wild cards. Now three to two, San Diego over Milwaukee in the fifth. They win that. The Padres win that. That part's over. Ooh, look out. Three and two. Well, I tell you again, you like the pitches that are more down by the chest area, the head area. It really is a no-no on either side. Pitchers are doing that where They'll throw in and then throw you that slide or a breaking ball away. Walk them. And here comes Michael Bourne. Another big time walk up our uh, standing room only sellout crowd of 44,865 today. Well, the fans have done their part all year long in supporting this club. Thick and thin, wins and losses. Doing their appreciation as their last three games here. They've just packed the joint. And Pat will leave for Michael Bourne as they're going for defense. They have the lead. They're going for defense in this game here in the sixth inning. Chris Coast the batter, of course, a little faster. Well, a faster base runner to maybe try and make something happen. Coast his first at bat after Carlos Ruiz was hit by a pitch and had a lead with an elbow contusion. Down and in from Rivera. Nunez on deck. 
there looks a little quick that he played again floor is the catcher. He can throw and you go you better have a jump because he's pretty accurate usually right around the bag and he throws it. And Rivera got to throw ground balls for double plays and that's what he's trying to do here. He's a fastball slider pitcher and the fastball's a sinker just threw a breaking ball for a strike there one and one. Michael Bourne a fast runner leads off first base nobody out here in the sixth inning. There he goes and he hit it. Chris Coast is hit by a pitch. So first and second nobody out for Nunez. Now that was going to be your hit and run. That ball up and in getting away from Rivera. Getting coast almost in the back, but but watch how he turns now. That's the right way to turn to prevent you from getting hit near the face area. A little bit late. But again, it was going to be probably the hit and run. Burn Warren taking off. Left handed bat, batter off the bench. Looks like a yala out there where the way he's kind of slinging the ball. Very important butt here. Tadahito Iguchi. Who played such a big part in this team and helped them so much when Chase Utley was out? Nunez is trying to get this bunt down now. And you see what Rivera's doing, throwing those high pitches to try and get him to pop it up. He's done that before, Nunez. Got to make sure that ball is below your hands. Try to make Zimmerman field it if possible, the third baseman. Dimitri Young gets a free run from first, and he's coming hard right now. And another pitch up high, 2 and 0. Oh. Good okay. job to stay off those pitches out of the strike zone. Yeah, they tell the pitchers to do that. Throw those high fastballs. I kind of almost forgot it. Told you, got here a little too early today. Nunez, oh, a perfect bunt. Zimmerman has to go to first, got him. But a great job by Abraham Nunez to get that bunt down. One away, second and third. That's the reaction you get in the dugout when you make do a play like that. Oh, he gets high fives from everybody. Little high bunt, but he kept his bat barrel below up above the ball. You can see that to make sure that it wasn't going to actually pop up. You can see the fans showing their appreciation for Gucci, giving him a standing ovation coming to the plate. He's done a marvelous job of taking over for Chase Sutley when he was hurt. Almost didn't miss a beat. Building very well, although I mean, obviously gives you the full, full package. Luis Ayala will come in probably because he's more of a strikeout pitcher than a ground ball pitcher, even though he's not a guy that strikes out a lot of people. And Iguchi up there to try and get the ball to the outfield. And yeah, you got to believe that was Tug's old motto. So Luis Ayala into the game, the fourth pitcher of the game used today by Matty Acker. Well, he's trying to get some more. Yeah, I could appreciate that. Tadahito, what a great hand he got when he came in. Uh, as announced as a pitcher, the fans really appreciate the job he did for that month. They understand base. They understand what yep. goes on here. I mean, again, the fans always have they show their appreciation. Infield in, one out, runners at second and third. Iguchi gets it up in the air to right center field, and that'll get the run in. Maxwell the play. Bourne tags. He'll score. Sacrifice fly run batted in. Good job by Iguchi. It's four to one. Boy, you talk about execution, Sard. Get the bunt down, get the ball to the outfield. ABC baseball being able to do just that with runners on. And so important to be able to do that. And again, when they do the little things on this club. It's almost as if you've gotten a hit when you go to that dugout. You can see a Gucci getting that ball well out to Maxwell. No chance to get Bourne coming in. And 
both runners advance. Post, post over to, a third. Right, post to third base, and MVP, MVP echoes through the ballpark for Jimmy. Breaking ball over for a strike. He singled today, scored a couple runs, and walked. Also stolen two more bags. 41 stolen bases just tack on to these amazing numbers this guy's put up. Strike two. He didn't like that. Well, I guarantee you, though, it's, it's pretty tough to see the ball. You can see Jimmy looking back. Well, it's pretty tough for him to hit against Ayala anyway. 0 for 11. He's talking to Cuzzy right now. They see the runner at third. Pat Burrell, Aaron Rowan, two good buds, checking it out. 0 and 2 to Jimmy Rollins. Outside. Yeah, the light tower is now gone across the mound, halfway across the mound. There's some nasty shadows right now. Yeah, one of the players will wear those type of light type sunglasses, Will, to make sure that that background is just the same all the way as opposed to seeing now uh, sunlight. Right. That's what Jimmy's doing. Ooh, tried to backdoor him and missed two and two. Chris Coast, the runner at third base with two outs, a run in, four one fills. Coasty hit by a pitch in this inning. He came on for Carlos Ruiz after Carlos had to leave the game. He was hit on the left elbow by a pitch. So you get a look at the shadows. Hard ground ball foul, first base side. Well, the bets are out in the sixth. To go to the top of the seventh. Dan Ugla had a two run double in that seven run first off Tom Glavin. And Romero will be the new pitcher in the seventh inning for the Phillies. JC Romero has been a huge part of their success. Pop foul out of play. Jimmy stays alive. He's kind of just feeling for it. Well, what do you think that Myers might go to in? I was thinking the same thing, but <laughs> it's, there's a possibility of that. Well, the way they're, they're, they're setting them up, the way it yep. is right now, looking at J.C. Romero coming in in the seventh. There's Brett chomping that gum. You know he wants to be out there at the end of the day. They can win this thing. Missed again. Shane Victorino, the on deck batter. 3 2 the count. Sinker slider guy, Luis Ayala. Here come the rally towels. Ball's hit well to right field. It is off the wall on one hop. Scoring Chris Coast. Jimmy Rollins is going to try for three. Here he comes. He's yes. got a triple. Whoa, <laughs> Jimmy Rollins with that big 20th triple of the year. Holy cow. Wow. Unbelievable. 6 1 fills, and he pumps his fist at third base. Yep. What a big hit they want that baseball. Well, when that ball was hit in the right and it went up high, you could see J. Rowe actually running from the get go. Boy, 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 the whole field is just electrifying here at Citizen Bank Ballpark. Man alive. This guy was running as if he was the fourth leg on that 440 relay, taking it, and I'm telling you, he hit second base and never looked back. Shane Victorino, the batter. Only the fourth player in Major League Baseball history to put up, well, we'll get to those numbers. Shane Victorino swings and misses. Oh, what a time to get it. Everybody's Woo. been rooting for it. <laughs> you could tell he smelled that. Anytime you get it under the, the context of the ball game as opposed to just going 
for a particular stat, it's always much, much better. Victorino, a little tapper to first, Young to Ayala, and they get him, but the Phils tack on two big runs, and Jimmy Rollins, you are the MVP. <laughs> Oh boy, there's Pat Burrow. You see him clapping. They know their importance of it, and they know how bad Jay Rowe wanted that as well. Oh boy. Here comes this historic triple for Jimmy Rollins. You watch him, and we'll be back in a little while. Jimmy Rollins with the MVP chance all over the ballpark. What a thrill for him to get that 20th triple and knock in a big run. J.C. Romero's on for the Phillies and for play by players, Harry. All right, thank you, Wills. Romero delivers the strike. What a job he has done out of the bullpen. Nothing in one to Willie Mopanian. JC's 51st game, 1 and 2. Look at that ERA. 1.31, 14 hits and 34 in the third innings. 28 strikeouts, 24 walks. One ball and one strike. One ball and two strikes. Five one fills. Fans here at Citizens Bank Park are ready for a celebration. Struck him out. That's one down here in the seventh. Flash Gordon came in, pitched a one batter, got a ground ball double play. And now it's in the hands of Romero. Well, he's doing a, oh, there's that little screwball like change up. It was after those fastballs there. Good pitch. Opponents hitting 128 against JC Romero. That's Boy, it really is. Really is. Here's Jesus Flores. The catcher is struck out and plied out. One ball and no strikes. A bit wide, two and nothing to count. Two Flores. That one over. Two balls and a strike. Jammed him and he fits the foul out of play. Two and two. Merrill, a fastball, it gets up there, 93, 94. Great changeup. Good breaking ball. He has really pitched superb baseball for the Phillies. Bounces that one up there, it's a full count. Three and two to Flores. Walk you. So Flores aboard with one down. It'll bring on Justin Maxwell. Maxwell, the rookie outfielder, who struck out, grounded out on a fine play by Jimmy Rollins. J. Roll comes in to tug it over with Flores. Jay rolled yet another milestone. It's amazing what he has done. 
Well, he is. Jimmy Rollins becoming only the fourth player in Major League history to do 20-20-20-20. Doubles, triples, homers, stolen bases. Wildfire Schulte did it back in 1911. Willie Howard Mays in 57. And Curtis Granderson last year. One ball and no strikes. Well, Milwaukee, according to the scoreboard, has just scored another run also, and they now lead San Diego five to four in the fifth inning. San Diego needs a win to clinch the wild card. If they do not, and the Mets lose, and Colorado wins, and the Colorado and San Diego would be tied for the wild card if all stays the way it is. Arizona and Colorado are scoreless in the third inning. I was somewhat surprised that San Diego did not pitch Jake Peavy in that game. Right. They went with Brett Tomko. And saving Peavy for the playoffs, well, you know, you do that and you may not make the playoffs. They Why went, not through that in 84? Game, get the game you have to get. The game, the, the same thing happened in 84 where we should have actually. Pitch Steve Trout, Rick Sutcliffe. We didn't. We were saving pitchers. Guess what? Didn't get there. Got him with a changeup. That's two strikeouts for J.C. Romero. San Diego, instead of going to Peter, went with Brett Tomko, and obviously he didn't do very well. Well, oh, there's that nasty screwball changeup that he was talking about. That ball, too, in the shadows. Tony Batista will come out of bat for Ayala. Runner at first base, two outs. Batista hitting at 260. 14 for 49 is a pinch hitter with one home run. Milwaukee got another run. 6 4 Brew Crew. Six four Milwaukee over San Diego. All right, you start San Diego. We want to save pitchers or save guys to pitch here in case we get in. That's definitely the wrong thing you to do. You got to get there first. Absolutely. Jake Peavy is very likely the National League Cy Young Award winner. He had him. Available for today, and you're saving him for postseason. Might be saving him. <laughs> maybe, maybe for next year if they don't get the rally. Well, if Colorado wins, they'll have a playoff yeah. game, and I guess they'll have to pitch him against the playoff game. Pitch high, it's two balls and a strike. Yeah, maybe that is the way that they were probably looking at it. But I would. I would do it here and now to try Likewise. to get there. Two balls and a strike here to Batista. Two it to oh, I mean Romero just pitches through bats. They just <laughs> rarely make contact. What a job he has done. Well, I think this kid's just having coming here and having new life. Found his confidence and he's just been pitching lights out. Fastball inside, tried to overthrow that one a little bit. And it's a full count. Last 52 appearances, a 1 1 8 ERA this season between the Phillies and the Red Sox. See what this guy has done. How can the Red Sox let this guy go? Oh, that's it in the air to left field. Michael Bourne waits. Michael Bourne squeezes. 
That's it for the Nationals here in the seventh. No runs, no hits. They leave one. Stretch time. We go to the bottom of the seventh. 5 1 Phillies. We're in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Mike Bassett comes on to pitch for the Washington Nationals, and these fans are truly into it. The Mets are still losing. It's now in the eighth inning, and that is eight to one, the Florida Marlins. Bassett is appearing in game number 29. At 20 starts, he's won five loss A to 505 ERA. Chase Utley, the first one to face him. Chase is one for two with a sack fly, a pop up, and a single. Two balls and no strikes. Bottom half of the seventh. It's a foul. Two balls and a strike. Kind of hoping here that the game at Shea is over before our game is. So we'll have a better knowledge of. We'll have to wait around to see. It's in the eighth inning now. Pitchers the low strike. Is Phil Cuzzy and he's certainly good for Philly starter Jamie Moyer, who pitched superb baseball in this final game of the season. Jamie for the Phillies went into the sixth inning, gave up just one run, it was not earned. Full count here to Utley. High fly ball right field. It's deep, but it's going to stay in the yard. Kearns puts it away. One down. I'll bring on Ryan Howard. Howard is struck out. Got a big two out bases loaded single. And got an infield single. He is two for three. When I say infield single, I can't remember <laughs> too many times this year he's had an infield well, single. That's what I said when that happened. We were talking about it. Gary and I were talking about it. I said, that's a lagger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It really was infield. Yeah. It was infield. It was about 30 feet in the outfield for an infield hit. <laughs> right. One strike to Ryan Howard. Hey, Harry, you've seen a lot of weird stuff this year. This is yep. just an amazing season. It really has been. One ball and one strike. These guys have a lot of heart. Oh, no doubt. A lot of heart. That kid did some job in a big game on Friday. Oh, that was, it was just electrifying. I mean, that's what a number one is all about when it goes in. Steve Carlton like, just give me a run and I'll take care of it. Breaking ball found the inside corner. One ball and two strikes. You don't teach what he has inside of him. You're born with that. Well, hit. Watch this baby out of here. Oh. Ryan Howard, number 47. And the Phillies now lead it 6 to 1. With that home run, Brenda Harris of Salem, New Jersey, weighing hundred dollars, courtesy of McDonald's home run jackpot. Wow! Excitement in the air here at Citizens Bank Park. The big man with three RBIs now this afternoon has 136, and we know that. Matt Holliday has not knocked in a run because Holliday and the Colorado Rockies have not scored, so 
You know, Ryan could very well win the RBI crown this year. He's one up on Holiday at this point. High breaking ball. Anytime you get that ball up high, he's not reaching for it. He is dangerous. That ball went off the bud light sign. You can see where that is. Yes, smoked it. So it is six to one Phillies, and that's going to be it for Bossy. He will be taken out here. There's Howard with 47 home runs, 136 RBI. Pitching change for the Nationals. We'll be back after these messages. We're in the bottom of the seven six one fills and the big man has done it again another bomb for the reigning National League MVP. Here it is against the left hander Bossick. Boy that ball breaking ball got him up in the zone and when he hit it he knew it no doubt about it just a matter of how far the ball was going to go. I'll tell you before the game and sitting down the lobby in the clubhouse with Greg Castriato the Phillies publicity guy. This big guy came in the clubhouse and he was juiced today. He says, come on, you two. And he pointed at us. He says, I want to see some emotion out of you two today, too. <laughs> and, I, and I thought, he says, I'm going to bunt today or I'm going to steal a base. And he okay. says, let's go. Well, we like that one. He hit yeah. off that butt right. <laughs> well, that's what I said to him. I said, try not bunt with many yeah. men are on base, please. Oh, boy. But he was really psyched coming in today. <laughs> and, you know, look what he's done. Yep. He well, was didn't bunt. And he didn't steal a base, but he did get an infield hit. It might be his first infield yeah. hit this year. He was so under control today, and yet the excitement level was there. I thought to myself, all right, I hope everybody feels like you. I think they did. Most of them, anyway. Didn't sense a lot of nervousness going on in the clubhouse at all. Well, That's and right. the way the first inning went, who set the table for him? Jimmy. Absolutely. Oh, so, yeah. Absolutely. He came out to play. You could see him out gets driven. a hit, steals two bases, and scores a run and puts you up yeah. immediately. It's stole with a left hander up there and chase something. So that I mean that takes big ones to be able to do that. Well, they just gotta go out here and just stay after him and get six outs. Tough Jesus. six outs. Jesus Calame is the new pitcher, and here's a fly ball hit in the air to right field. Kearns puts this one away for out number two. I've well, been around this game too long to think anything's done. That's for sure. But it's an exciting day here right now. Michael Bourne will bat for the first time. Bourne hitting a 280. He has a homer six RBIs. Calamay appearing in game number 61. He's won five, lost one with a 392 ER. 64 hits and 64 and a third innings. 42 strikeouts, 27 walks. One ball and no strikes. Two and nothing to count to Bourne. Strike gets the call. Two and one the count. 
Dearborn. Nobody up in the Phillies bullpen. Looks like the last J.C. Romero to go out there for one more inning. Yeah, exactly. And then they'll probably have Myers throwing during that inning, just just to be ready in case there's any problem, and uh, then use him in the eighth if they have to, and they don't want to. Two balls and two strikes. Rounded sharply, but at second baseman Belliard. And the Phillies are down. Ryan Howard adds another run for the Phillies here in the seventh inning with his 47th home run. And we move to the eighth. The Phillies on top by a score of six to one. Faces Felipe Lopez, who is 0 for 3. One strike to Lopez. Ball on one strike. Line drive hit to center field. So Lopez leads off the eighth with a single. Will bring on Ronnie Belliard. Washington Nationals. You give them a lot of credit the way they just stay after teams. There's Brett Myers up. You know they they play the Mets tough. They're playing the Phillies tough. They're going to be moving into a new ballpark next year. They got a future. That's some view. Well, Mala no strikes. The belly art. He's been on base all three times that he's been up. Has doubled, been safe on him there and single. He has scored the. Low Nationals run. At Shea Stadium, they are moving into the ninth inning. It is still eight to one at Florida. All on a strike here to Belliard. Missed two balls and a strike. Broken background ball could be two. There was J. Roll. There's Howard. Four, six, three, double play. Two outs and no base runners. on Ryan Zimmerman who was lined out and twice struck out. Well there's your basic four six three you get that on that little fastball it's a wave. Boy good play. Yeah get belly art out too because he's doing what he always does <laughs> try to hit it the other way make something happen and instead of two on nobody out you got two outs and nobody on base for one of these boppers. One ball and no strikes. One ball and one strike. Breaking ball for a strike. One and two to Zimmerman. Zimmerman and Cousy have been battling each other all day. Well, really, he's got borderline pitches. Called on him. Jamie struck him out twice looking on really, really good pitchers' pitches, and he's been getting them. He's just been getting them from everybody. 
Fans on their feet, swing and a miss. Third strikeout for J.C. Romero. We go to the bottom of the eighth, six out away from being National League East champs. Three here and three at Shea. After seven and a half, it's 6-1, the Phillies. Guys, this has been really exciting. Not only can the Phils win the National League East with six more outs, three here and three at Shea, but they can perhaps erase the memory of the 64 Phillies. Oh, I'm telling you, <laughs> and, and that's exactly what everybody has been talking about, being able to erase the mark of the 64 well, Phillies. Well, let, let me tell you something. Uh, you know, you guys have been in baseball a long time, and you know about the 60. I lived it. Oh. And it was <laughs> awful. Awful, awful. And when you've lived here and gone through that, you'll never forget it. Yeah. Chris Coase grounds one. Oh, that's a fine play by Zimmerman. He takes a hit away from Coase, one down. Well, that guy keeps playing. Well, I can remember, I've been around baseball for quite a few years too, Wheels, and I can remember at the start of this homestand when we opened the telecast saying, you know, <laughs> Might as well forget about the division. Let's concentrate on the wild card. <laughs> How many times have we said that? <laughs> really? You know, just over and over and over, and nothing's happened yet, but. Wow. It's feeling a little better. <laughs> Here's Abraham Nunez. He sacrificed his first time up. His only time up. And what a big play that it was. was. You look good. back on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That produced, helped produce two runs. In a 3 1 game to a 5 1 game, now a 6 1 game. There's a gamer. Wes Helms has moved into the on deck circle. Too bad for the pitcher, Romero. Great catch over to our left in the club. Ball. One ball and one strike to Nunez. Two balls and a strike. Three balls and a strike. Jamie Moyer, what a job today. Kept him, kept him in the game. Well, you knew what kind of effort, you, at least you felt what kind of effort you were going to get with him out there, and that was being focused and giving all he has, and he's done that practically all season long. One unearned run given up by Jamie. This is a lot in the air to center, and Maxwell will take care of it with his sunglasses down. That's two down. It'll bring on Wes Helms batting for J.C. Romero. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, they're in the bottom of the ninth at Jay Stadium. Marlon Anderson is batting against Kevin Gregg, and then it'll be Jose Reyes and Luis Castillo. We'll keep you posted on that one as this one goes along. Helms hitting at 247. He's four for 31 as a pinch hitter. That's Florida's Kevin Gregg doing the pitching down the ninth inning for the Marlins, not our Kevin Gregg. Our Kevin Gregg does a great job in the PR department for the Phillies. I bet he does. Publicity <laughs> yeah. man. Played Eric Gregg's son is a fine young man and does a wonderful wow. job. Eric Conchita did a heck of a job with him. Yep. I think to the count to Helms. They're obviously saying MVP for the guy in the on deck circle. Well, it makes Wes feel good up there at home plate to hear that. Makes him feel real good. I haven't had that good a year. <laughs> There's the man. J Roll, what's he done today? Singles, stolen two bases, walked, tripled. Becoming the fourth player in Major League history. He had 20 or more doubles, triples, homers, and stolen bases. Helms goes hits. down swinging, so we are heading to the ninth. It's Brett Myers' time. Billings looking to clinch the National League. They need three more outs. 
It's six one Bills. Top half of the ninth inning the Phillies leading by a score of six one and Brett Myers will try to finish it off here. Myers appearing in game number 51. He's won five lost seven 21 saves. He has struck out 81 and 67 and two thirds innings of the rally towels are waving as Brett works to get three more outs. Two outs in the bottom of the ninth at Shea. Florida just one out away from downing the Mets eight to one. So the Phillies need four more outs to become National League East champions. One strike to Dimitri Young. You hear the cheer? Yep. You hear the cheer? You know what that is? That's the final out at Chase Stadium. <laughs> the Florida Marlins have beaten the New York Mets eight to one. And the Phillies are three outs away from becoming National League East champions on this amazing run. Here's the final out from Shea. Luis Castillo strikes out. Kevin Gregg gets him. And the fans have just been informed that that's over. Look at that. Wow. wow. This is just unbelievably exciting. This is. Wow. What great fans. Well over three million coming out to Citizens Bank Park this year. Third time in Philly's history that they have drawn three million or more. There's a swing and a miss. That's one of them. Two more outs. Oh, Two boy. more outs. Austin Kearns will be the batter. Sarge, I guess as a player, when you're out there in the field, you can you can feel oh. the fans' excitement. I tell you, I'm, I'm feeling it up here. I told you I made oh, a yeah. mistake and got here too early. I got here early for the players today. Couldn't sleep last night. Wow. One strike. Two strikes. Two more outs and the Phillies will host the first round of the playoffs. So emotional. Now balls and two strikes. Bouncing ball chop foul. Well, you get these two outs. I mean, obviously, you got to give a lot of credit to Charlie Manuel. Never wavered, yeah. even when they were four and eleven. One ball and two strikes. Really steady percept. Kept everybody on the same page. This is really, really special to be here. And see this. It's quite an afternoon. And I ask for a better fall day. One that I will never forget. Wow. Two balls and two strikes. Popped him in the air to left field. Michael Bourne waits. Michael Bourne squeezes. That's two of them. One more out. One more. Willie Mopena stepped to the plate. Brad Myers has retired to him. What a job by Flash Gordon, J.C. Romero, and Brett Myers during this stretch drive. They have been outstanding. Picked up their game is what they did. One strike to Willie Mopadian. He has struck out all three times that he has been up. Two strikes to Willie oh, Mopena. Wow. Brett would like to finish it with a K here. And the you fans know are on their feet. I'm going to be on my feet. This is truly exciting. No balls and two strikes. Two outs. A little bit low and away. One ball and two strikes. Wow. 
Myers has the sign from Chris Coast. Curveball struck it loud. The Phillies are National League East champions. Look at the scene on the field. Look at the scene on the stand. This is incredible. The Phillies are National League East champions and will go to the postseason for the first time since 1993. This was totally sold out of this ballpark, standing room only, and not a single person has left the ballpark. They're still all here. Bob Seed on the field. And it'll be a celebration in the clubhouse. The champagne courts will pop as the Phillies have won the National League East. Sarge, this is something.